Hello, I am Noye Urilisi Tudores. I'm a licensed broker in Illinois, as well as a licensed instructor. On this channel, I bring you the best tips and tools to getting your real estate license. I also answer any questions you may have about the process. If you're new here, welcome and do consider subscribing. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about armatization. Now, when you think about armatization, going back to the chapter in your in your textbook, right, your coursework of financing. Now, with armatization, what we're doing is there's a formula for it, and I'll put it on the screen so you can see it's a very complex formula. Now, what they're doing is making sure that all your monthly payments are equal. So, so that at the end of your term, so 10 years, 15 years, 30 years, however long it's going to take you to pay off that loan, at the end, your final payment and your balance will be equal. And when they're both equal, and so your final payment is equal to the balance at the end of your term, then you fully paid it off. And that's called a fully amortized loan. And so in order to make this calculation easy, there is a table and on the exam, they will show you the table or give you the table and ask you questions based off of that um, table. Now, quick disclaimer, every exam is different, okay? You may not get a question on this, you may get a question on this. So just prepare. If you don't get a question on this, all well and good. But just in case you get a question on this, at least you know how to solve it, all right? So grab your notebook, grab something to write with, and let's jump in and talk about the amortization table and do some math calculations, all right? Be sure to grab a calculator as well so that you can run these numbers with me. Um, I wanna make sure that you are practicing as we are going through these together. So when I, as I'm going through the math problems, I will tell you to pause the video and try to solve it on your own before I give you the answer, right? And why I want you to do that is so that you get practice. As you do it, your body and your brain is engaged, right? So it helps you remember more rather than just watching. Also, and this is my other tip for the exam, as you learn vocabulary, as you watch some of my other videos with vocabulary and some other stuff, right? Say those things out loud. So when you're saying it, your brain is registering it more. So you see it, you say it. So you see it with your eyes, you say it with your lips, and that helps you with retention as well. So don't just read with your eyes and in your mind, but verbalize it because that really helps you remember. And the other way you could do, you could remember too, is if you write it down. So that's why with math, it helps to write down your calculations because then your brain is engaged, your mind is engaged, your hand is engaged, and it's less, um, the odds are less for you to be distracted when you're physically doing the math problems, okay? So that's my TED talk for today. Let's jump in and do some math problems. All right, so here on the screen, I have the amortization table. If you look on the table, on the top part of the table, it tells you that the monthly payments, it's the monthly payments required to repay a $1,000 loan. On the left side, it has all of the percentage, the interest rates, and then on the right, it has the years. So if I'm paying something off 6% in 20 years, so go find 6% on the left side and then trace all the way down to the right under 20. And you will notice that this person will be paying $7.16 for 20 years, every month for 20 years to pay off a $1,000 loan. Okay. Same thing if it was 7% and 30 years. So you come on the left, you find 7, then you trace all the way to the right under 30, and it's $6.65, okay? So that's how you locate the amount you're paying every month for a $1,000 loan. Now, when you are getting a mortgage, right, for a house, you're not getting a $1,000 loan. But this is a baseline because everything we just multiply by 1,000 and get that number. So for example, if the loan amount is $250,000, and it's 6% 20, okay, 20 years, 6% 20 years. So on the table, you find 6%, 20 years, that's $7.16. But that's for every $1,000. 
I told you we're doing 250,000. So we're doing 250 of 1,000. So we multiply 7.16 by 250. And that gives us the amount we're paying every month on that $250,000 loan. All right, so let's do this example together. A borrower received a loan for $175,000 to purchase a property. If the loan is at 6.5% interest for 25 years, what are his monthly payments? Okay. So the monthly payments, we're looking for 6.5%, 25 years. So what will we then do? We go back to our table. So let's go back to the table. We're going to be looking for a 6.5%. All right. Write this number down. 6.5%. 25 years okay so let's go back to the table and here we're going to look for six and a half 25 years and you should be getting what do you get 6.75 okay so then you come back to the question all right so if it's 6.75 and our loan amount is 175,000 so we multiply 6.75 by $175, and that should give us our monthly payments. So do the math and let me know what you get. All right, so you should have gotten, and pause this if you need to. You should have gotten $1,181.25. And if you got something different, Look again, go back to the table, make sure that you you uh, follow through and got the right numbers and you're multiplying by 175. Here's another example. A buyer received a loan for $167,000 to purchase a property. If the loan is at 7%, all right, so this time is 7%, 15 years, and the amount is 167, what are the monthly payments? Again, we go back to our table. We're looking for 7%, 15 years. So 7%, find seven on the left, 15 years on the right. Okay, now pick the number. I'm not gonna tell you the number. Go ahead and pick the number. All right, let's go back to the question. 167,000, 7%, 15 years. What is your answer? Okay, so pause, get the answer, don't cheat. Okay, so here's the answer, right? So from the table, it was 8.99. And we multiply that by 167, and that gives us $1,501.33. Okay. If you need to pause, go back, go over some of the things I said already, please do that, okay? That's why this is a video. Make sure that you understand everything before you go forward, because I'm about to introduce something else in the next example that we have, All right? So let's go to the next example. A borrower is to receive a $195,000 loan to purchase a property. The lender offered the following loan term options. Interest rate of 6.5% for 15 years or interest rate of seven and a quarter percent for 30 years. What will be the difference in his monthly payments if he chose to pay this off in 15 years? Okay, so make a note of this. So when we go back to our table, we know what we're looking for. So we're looking for six and a half percent, 15 years, and then seven and a quarter in 30 years. So what's our table? Six and a half, 15. Do you have your number? All right, so grab your number, six and a half, 15. And seven and a quarter, 30. Seven and a quarter, 30 years. Okay. The question is, what's the difference in the monthly payments if we chose 15 over 30? Right? So you have to figure out what the monthly payment is for 30, for 15, and then subtract the two. Or um, there's another way. So 
think it through, pause this video, think it through, and then we'll solve it together. So from the table, what numbers did you get for 15 years and 30 years? So for 15, I got 8.71, and for 30, I got 6.82. Now the next step would then be to subtract. This is the easiest way, so we'll do it both ways. Subtract those two numbers from each other, because remember, it's for a thousand dollar loan. So subtract eight, uh, six. So subtract six point eight two from eight point seven one, and you're gonna get one point eight nine. Then you multiply that number by one point nine five, and that should give you three hundred and sixty eight dollars and fifty five cents. If you did it the other way, if you figured out the monthly payment for six and a half, and then figured out the monthly payment for 30 years, then subtracted both of them, you should still get six, 368.55. All right, so either way works, but this is a quicker way to get it done. And here's a final question. A borrower received a loan for $250,000 to purchase a property. If the loan is at 7% for 30 years, Annual taxes are $6,000. Insurance is $1,800 per year. What are the monthly PITI payments? Okay. So remember P what PITI is, principal, interest, taxes, and insurance, right? So we know the annual tax. We know the annual insurance. So we could divide those two numbers by 12 to give us the monthly insurance and monthly taxes. From the table, we can figure out what the PI would be, the principal and interest, so the monthly payments on the mortgage. And our interest rate here is 7% 30 years, right? So make a note of that, 7% 30 years. Let's go back to the table. 7% 30 years. So grab that number. Okay. And now let's go back to the question. So the number you got, see if you can calculate the PI. And essentially all you would then do is add all the numbers that you get to get the actual monthly payments. So from the table, you should have gotten $6.65 as the monthly payments. So you multiply that number by 250. And that should give you $1,662.50. Monthly taxes would be six thousand divided by twelve, which is five hundred dollars. Insurance is one um, eighteen hundred divided by twelve, which is one fifty. So you add one six six two point five plus five hundred plus one fifty, and you should get two thousand three hundred and twelve dollars and fifty cents as the monthly PITI. All right, I said this was our last question, but I'll give you a bonus one. And this one, I won't give you the answer. So go ahead and solve it and then look in the comments. I'll leave the answer in the comments if you are interested, but try to solve this on your own, all right? So how much money would a buyer have to pay extra per month on a $150,000 loan at 7%, 15-year mortgage versus $150,000 loan at 7.5% on a 30-year mortgage. With that, we've come to the end of today's lesson. Hope this was beneficial to you. If you need to go back and review again, please do so. Make up your own questions and practice this again as you prepare for the examination, all right? Help me grow this channel. Please like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, share it with your classmates. Not every real estate textbook has this amortization table in it, but some people have gotten questions like this on the exam. And so it's essential um, that you know this just in case you get it, all right? And share it with your classmates, especially if it's not in your textbook. Um, let me know in the comments if you have additional questions, if you need more clarification, jump on to the next video. Okay. So take care and I will see you in the next one.